On this episode of AC Designs Garage, I'm going to show you how to make this cool trick little cheap English wheel out of a couple bearings and some scrap steel. Coming up. Alright guys, let me run you around this thing real quick and I'm going to show you. This is one I built back in 2005. And we just pinstriped it and stuff. But it's worked really good. It's like for small stuff. I got some examples down here I'm going to show you stuff I built with but like I said it's, it's really cool it just has a couple these are actually uh, like racing go-kart rear bearings and I'm gonna give you the part numbers and stuff for all these bearings bearings around 20 some bucks a piece the only expensive part and I'm gonna show you how you can get around it is this is a I think they call it a key shaft it's got a little key slot in it. the only reason you need this on your adjuster up and down is because you see it's got the you turn it as you turn it it lowers your uh, wheels down and the reason you need a key because I just got some little nuts tacked on here with these Allen bolts it keeps it clocked pretty good so it tries it keeps it pretty straight like that so you're gonna have to have some form of key I'm gonna show you a way you can do it maybe using a go-kart axle cut them they're about 50 bucks but I've got less than a hundred dollars in this thing it actually works pretty good all right, guys, here's some examples of some of the stuff that I've used this on. These were a blister. I just tacked them together. We was going to do like a little salt flat racer, like a belly tank or something. But that, that's made out of, a, I think, a 16 gauge. I just hammered it out on the stump and run it through this wheel. Here's some aluminum I played with. I overworked it. You can see where it cracked. I should have kneeled it some more. But as you can see in here, all the hammer marks, I hammered it out, and, and I just... Uh, ran it through here and smoothed it out pretty cool my first little I guess fender you'd call it I made is some stuff and here's a top fuel hydro I was working on this all made out of nuts and bolt the engine is this is 16 gauge it's all ticked together in pieces like this is a piece this is a piece and we well, can see in here maybe you'll see where it's all ticked like I said, if you want to do like little model stuff, or I mean, even small little patch panels on your car, like when you're re restoring it stuff, you can do air, make you some custom air cleaners or speed blisters or, I mean, you make a lot of stuff. I wouldn't want to try to wheel out a, a roof insert or nothing, which you're not going to. But like I said, parts is this small here. You can, uh, it does a pretty good job. Like I said, this one could use some more bracing, but I don't put a lot because like if you crank on this thing, it could probably... You could drill a hole. I've heard a lot of people drilling holes, putting concrete in it, or build you like a little gusset and stuff on top. All I got are these, probably quarter, I think it's quarter inch plate. They're just all tigged in there and stuff. Let's see some of my striping and stuff. I've done this back when I first started pin striping and I striped everything. Like I said, this is all out of just scrap stuff. I mean, this, this here is actually a pulley off power steering pump off of a I think it's a small block forward or something I had laid around. But I'll get over here on the paper. I really want to draw it out and give you all the measurements off of this one. I'm going to draw it out here. And uh, I'll link all the part numbers and stuff in the description. So if you want to find it, you can. All right, guys, we'll get a couple measurements. I'm going to get your top and uh, down tube and all your different measurements for it. I, I like to cut them. You don't have to cut them on a 45, but my measurements are going to be because I like to cut my corners on a 45. They just look neater. But my measurements are all going to be the long measurement. You know, when you're doing a 45, you got a short measurement and a long measurement. I'm going to give you the long measurements on everything. All right, our top, top measurement is 20 inches. Right down up here. Our backbone measurements, what I'm going to call it is... 18. I tried to keep these pretty round numbers so it's easier instead of doing like quarters and all this stuff. It's just a little bit easier. So our backbone 18 inches and our bottom piece is it's 20 and a quarter. I know I said I wasn't going to do those but I forgot the bottom was a little bit lower. The bottom is 20 quarter inches. Alright, our uh, adjustment tube is 13 inches. And 
And I think our key shaft, if I remember, because this design here, you can't really take it apart to get it out because it just comes up and hits the way I made it. Probably should have made it a little different, but the key shaft, I tried to keep it as short as I could because this stuff's pretty expensive. So you only have, let me run it all the way up. That's all you got here. So from here, you really only need, let's see, eight inches, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna say be safe and go 11 inches on your, your uh, key piece. And another piece you're gonna have to have is some uh, three quarter all thread that runs your adjuster. And all I have is a washer with a nut welded on the inside and then you just run it all thread. See, this is not attached, it moves. That all thread just pushes it up and gravity just lets it fall down. So you need some uh, three quarter inch all thread, a nut washer, and then some kind of pulley, old lawnmower wheel, it don't matter. Whatever you got laying around this round that you can adjust it with. And the tubing that I'm using is one by two, 125 or eight inch thick wall. And also you're gonna need right here my wheel, which I'll get it closer. This was, I think a piece of two before. Yeah, this was just a piece of two before square tubing that I cut and notched for it, so. I'll run you around and show you all the little pieces of stuff. I'm gonna... All right, guys, I'm gonna draw this thing out for you and give you your measurement stuff, show you how it goes together. This thing's pretty simple to go together and it's, it has some adjustment to it, especially in the wheel setup, but we'll get this drawn real quick. I'm gonna draw the upper tube first and I'm gonna put your measurements on. So if you wanna pause this video and copy the measurements and stuff, it, like I said, you can make it whatever size you want. This is just a good size. It's not real heavy and it hangs on the wall nice. And all I've done on the very bottom of it where I got it clamped in the vise, I had a little extra piece of that one by two, 120 wall, 125 wall, or 120 wall, I think is what it is. And um, just use something to clamp clamp on because it's gonna get dented up so you wouldn't scratch your frame up. So here we go. Give us enough room. So we can do our 45. Roughly, these are not exact. So this one's 20 inches from this point. I should have put my mark up here, I guess. All right, now our next one. Let's see, so I can get this thing halfway square. 17. Let's cap this end off even though it is a hair longer. So it was, the bottom was 20 and a quarter. So it'll go from your long end, I forgot to do that on the top. So that's 20, one quarter of an inch from this point to this point. The backbone will go from the long end also. And the backbone is 18. And that goes from this point to this point. All right, let's see on our adjuster tube. I'll give you the measurement of how far it hangs down also. Let me grab that real quick for you. All right, our adjustment tube, go ahead and draw it out. I'm just gonna use the width of this roller just because it fits it pretty good. Probably went a little high on that. But. All 
That's a little thick, but it'll work. All right, from this point, we'll go here. To here below the main frame is four inches. I don't know that there's a rhyme or reason to it. That's just the way it turned out when I built it. So that, from this point here down is four inches. And I'll check that the adjustment tube is 13 overall. So that way you know what to cut it to. Y'all probably ain't gonna be able to read none this time I get done scribbling. That's 13 inches total. Like I said, it, it hangs four inches below. Now what you'll do is you'll get a, that's probably, it's 3 16 thick washer or so. And basically what it is, is the washer tigs on the bottom and it already has, make sure you have your nut on it first. This is up inside. It's up inside and that you tig your nut onto the washer, then tig this to the, the pipe. And I'll go show you that here in a minute. And then you're, what happens is you got your, uh, let me put it here. This is like an invisible tube here. This is your key stock in here. That your saddle goes on. I about got run out of room here. That's your saddle that you'll make. And I'll show you how to make it over here too. And it sits. And what this does, this piece runs up and down. But what you have to have is your, uh, like I said, this is on the inside. This does not weld to this. It just pushes against it. And this is your three quarter inch all thread that hangs out the bottom. And then you put your big old wheel thing on. And you weld this here. And as you turn this, basically it just pushes that key stock up and down, adjust your anvil wheel, I think that's what it's called. Now that's the domed one. Anyway, so that's that part. What you have is some, I think I had a seven eighths inch square stock, solid square stock. We just put it up in here and TIG it. It probably sits, kind of goes back in the tubing about that much. And then you just weld it on and, and you'll, what I done was I used my key shaft that I had for this left over. And what you do is you mount your, your upper bearing on. So you'll TIG this on and that's welded on. Just make sure everything's good square. I mean, it's time you want to, Make sure everything squares up real good. You TIG it on because the bearing that goes on this has a set screw. So the cool thing is you can slide it on this and set screw and you can align it. So you got alignment here on it in case you don't get everything perfect, which mine's nowhere near perfect. But you got that. And like I said, your bearing will, that you have has like a set screw on it. And you'll just slide it on here and you can adjust it. Like I said, you got... Yeah, it looks like I got probably half inch adjustment back and forth, or you can flip it around whichever way you need to. But yeah, this is your saddle. That's where your other bearing goes in here. And uh, of course that moves back here, but I'll show you how the saddle, I'll get you the measurements for the saddle real quick and then we'll run over it and I'll show you how it all goes together. All right guys, making the saddle basically is what I started off with is a piece of two by four tubing like that. So what you do, we're going to draw it square so it's easier to see to make the saddle. This is your side profile of it. So what you're going to do, I cut it down to, I think we cut it down to about three inches. So we just cut three inches off the top. From here to here is three inches. And you just cut it off completely. And then what you do, that leaves you a you cut it down to three inches, and I cut this one three inches long too, so it'd just be square. It just makes it easier. So you cut that off. This is discarded now. And then you'll come up here, and what you have here is you want it one inch wide here at the top. And you cut a little notch, and basically it just comes down like this. You just cut this away. And then when you have this, we're gonna put it up here because I got so much junk drawn. Once you get where you have this piece like this, well, that don't look good. Anyway, you cut a little saddle for your bearing to ride in. 
So now I'm going to show you all how it goes. All right, now that I got all the bore and draw and stuff, I was going to show you this saddle piece a lot easier. You can, you can see where I cut. This is an inch wide. That's three inches tall, and that's three inches wide. And you see how I got my... You got your little notch there for it. Like I said, that's just a piece of two by four stock. And this is that go-kart bearing. And what I did was I had this stock of some I kept using, but I had to drill a hole in the center of it and tack in just a little piece of rod in it. It just gives it something where it sits in here. That just, it holds it nice and you can take it out and stuff like that. But that's how the saddle works. And here's the keyed stock and you can see it. This is the main thing that you really need here to keep it square. Cause it, it'll now here's where I slid the bar stock in the 7 8 bar stock tigged around you may have to grind down to get the slide up in it then you weld your inch and a quarter um, that's what these bearings are for is a inch and a quarter inside diameter and that shaft is well you can see it here it uh it sticks out a little bit and like I said you got your adjustment here Now I'm going to link instead of this, uh, this stuff's pretty expensive. Now when I bought this uh, key shaft, it's an inch and a quarter solid key shaft. It's got the key in it. In 05, it was $74 for a foot, I think it was. But now I've, I've saw where you can, uh, these racing go-kart axles you can buy, and I'll, I'll put you some links in the description. You can check them out. It'll be easy for you to find them. All right, guys, we're going to hammer out a little piece. I want to show you how it works. This, this is my old stump down here that I've had for years. Hardwood stump, old shop bag I bought. This is uh, probably 3,003, 55,000. So fairly soft stuff. We'll hammer it out, and then I'll run it through the wheel and show you that it works pretty fair. I mean, for what it is, no more money you got in it. So here we go. I like to make a little divot down in it. that's got enough lumps in it I'm tired of beating on it so we're gonna run it through the wheel see what it does see if we can smooth it out a little bit all right now what we're gonna do is just run it up till it touches and put a couple you could you see she flexes a little bit but you know you could remedy that but ain't too stable on this table but Right, guys as you can see I mean we got a ton of crown here I mean it it's got a lot of nice shape I don't really know what it's for but it could be made into like I guess like a 
a cab corner on something, bottom of the cab. So, that's it. It works pretty good with a little bit of hammering and stuff. It, and it could use a lot more, but I'll tell you what, you can about stand on this. It's so strong now, but like I said, like on that fender I made, you can uh, block this off and polish it, and you'll be surprised how nice it gets if you spend a little more time on it. But I just wanted to show you guys how, how it works. It does pretty good. All right, guys, I'm going to go over to Specs one more time just so you can uh, see how everything basically goes together. It's pretty, like I said, it's pretty simple. The, uh, the only thing I didn't mention the first go around is the adjustment tube, which is this piece right here that your shaft runs up down in. This is an inch and three quarter diameter tubing right here is what this is, which would be this piece here. It goes, I think it's 13 inches from up this inch and three quarter. This is a inch and a quarter and what all the bearing stuff is. So when you get it, make sure you get an inch and a quarter. Every one of these bearings are inch and a quarter inside diameter. Here's probably the next couple weeks project. We're gonna buff the body on the 32. I got the hood top and stuff done this week. Y'all so bright, the camera don't like it. We're about to get it ready. The only thing we lack is uh, we're gonna start on interior for long. Everything else is already done in it. Got to buff the body. I got the hood sides and hood top. We got the them finished today. I got to do one more polishing on them, but they're ready. Here's what they look like with the hood latches on them. Days already got them on. All right, guys. Hope y'all enjoyed this build on my little cheap scrap metal English wheel thingy here. I've had this thing for years. It works good, especially on little small projects and stuff. But go build you one. You can build one in a weekend really easy, and you can be hammering out junk, knocking dents out, and all that good stuff, and having a ball. Hope y'all enjoyed this build. God bless. We gone.